In, in this tutorial, we will reduce our XTE PCA uh, data, uh, which is collected from the one of the three uh, instruments that is on our XTE. So one is the high energy uh, X-ray telescope, which is the HXTE, uh, which basically collects uh, super high energy photons that, that can go up to 200 kV. Uh, the other one is called the All Sky Monitor, which basically is very self-explanatory co that collects uh, all sky observations all the time collected. I'm sorry, it was in the past. And uh, and then we also have this PCA, which is another pointed instrument that is uh, made out of uh, five PCUs, which are called basically proportional counter units in contrast to CCDs that we have seen in XMM Newton, which both of the both for the HXDE and also um, the PCA. They are pointed instruments, but they do not provide you spatial information as you would see from uh, instruments like XMM Newton, New Star, uh, or Chandra. RXDE, unfortunately, uh, was terminated in 2012. And as I was reading today, I didn't really know about this, but uh, one of the ESA's policies is now to start actually taking taking down these instruments when uh, the operations are finalized. And I learned that he actually entered uh, the atmosphere in the uh, May of 2018 and possibly burned down. And uh, we don't really have any remains from this instrument anymore. Uh, it was specifically important and it still is important for uh, studying the outbursts uh, of X-ray binaries. Uh, there are tons of papers that you can actually find, uh, like a whole collection of observations uh, done for almost more than 30 X-ray binaries, at least black hole X-ray binaries that are my focus, basically, that tracks every single observation of every single day, which has never been done before, and it still is not being carried in a similar sense. Uh, unfortunately, due to its structure and uh, operating ways, uh, it has certain limitations. The most important one being uh, not being able to be sensitive enough to lower energies where you would actually see uh, your accretion disk dominating. Uh, for a PCA, this energy range is actually uh, officially is said to be at between 2 keV and 60 keV, but the instrument itself is not uh, sensitive to anything outside of 3 to 25 keV energy range. If you know that you're working with a higher energy source where you sh you're sure that your um, high energy contribution is going to be much, much stronger than your background, then you can extend this energy range to higher energies if you want to. But it is a mostly common practice to actually select only between 3 to 25 keV, unless you are sure that you can actually work around your way with uh, the background. Since also it's not an imaging uh, instrument that you cannot actually use the same approach that we had with XMM Newton, where you select your source region and then you can actually select your background differently. Uh, if you're lucky enough that you can actually play around with your background in a way that you have different source selections and you can compare uh, its effect on your spectrum. However, uh, for RXT EPCA, you cannot do that. So you will need to rely on the modeling uh, of the background, which is basically supported by the mission team. Uh, they do update these background models, and it is already included in all of these steps that you will see when you're preparing your observation. So one thing you, you can say, okay, we're lucky that we don't have to deal with it. 
But sometimes if you start working with other sources, then you will see that, oh, okay, this is actually a big problem and you need to talk to some people who are still handling this background information. But uh, other than that, a lot of the steps are pretty much the same, apart from not being able to see what you're working with. Um, sometimes it's actually a good thing, sometimes it's not, but it will depend on what you want to do with your science products. Um, so once you download your data, and if you can actually go and uh, check your directory yourself right now, that you will see that the script that I sent you yesterday actually downloaded one folder that starts with the P and then has a, a bunch of numbers after it. For our specific case, it's going to be P91702, which means that it that's the proposal level. So the number you will see after this part is going to be your proposal ID, which will belong to, which actually belonged to a specific person who proposed the observation. And then if you go under that proposal level directory, you will see that there are going to be other folders that are named like this. So this will be the part that you have the proposal ID, and then these will be the part that signifies um, the observation IDs. Uh, unfortunately, with RxTE, uh, we do not have these numbers chronologically ordered. So you will see that some of these series will increase in number as you go in, in, a, in, in the day. Uh, but sometimes you will see even some of the proposal IDs being squeezed into your actual proposal, and then you have to actually start including them as well. So be careful when you are uh, actually trying to analyze the entire outburst and see the characteristics in terms of the, uh, the time frame that it follows. Uh, other than that, there's actually nothing significant about these proposal and observation levels. So what you will do is that you will need to start preparing your observation, very similar to XMM Newton. Uh, there's going to be one task to do it that will actually run three different tasks that were that were done separately before. Uh, one of them is going to be creating a filter that contains your housekeeping information, which means that what happened during the observation, how it operated. Um, if you go to your proposal level, you will see that there are some uh, folders start with A and Z, which actually is before the actual uh, observation and after the actual observation that that information you will need for uh, preparing your observation ID. So this will create your filter. And then you will run this specific task, which going, going to be starting uh, from how to estimate the background by uh, using the model that is most uh, up-to-date uh, provided by the um, PCA team. And it will also create uh, a filter basically a filter that will be uh, giving out, giving you the dead time values in which there was some sort of an operational issue or uh, certain PCUs, as I've, say, as I've said to you, there are five of them. Some of them will be turned on and off during the observation. Sometimes all of them will be turned off due to some technical uh, reasons. So it will give out what time actually corresponds to what uh, type of observation. And then you will create this PCA back estimation is then you will create your background spectrum for your specific observation. So be, be careful that this is not exactly the, uh, the same that we have in XMM Newton. So it's not going to be specifically like a whole specific region around your source. It will be modeling the background from uh, your observation and from your source spectrum. So this is sometimes very useful that you don't have to deal with it. Um, it's the how, how you run this task is fairly easy for all of the tasks that I will show you below. There will be two options or even three if you wanna actually script things out. Um, you can basically run this task 
on your terminal after initializing Hellsoft, of course, you will run this and it will start it will start giving you uh prompts like where you will need to input like give you the uh input uh directory and also you will also create a directory that is called your observation ID, which is going to be this part. And then you will have a dash result or whatever you want to call it. Um, one thing you need to be careful about, you cannot run any of these tasks above, above proposal level. So you have to be working within this proposal level. So if this is my common practice, if you are working with, I don't know, how hundreds or tens observations, you might want to move all of those, either copy or uh, move all of those uh, observation level directors into one and then create a script that will look more like this. So what it will do is that you will provide a list of observations. So you can either remove this uh, and put uh, just question marks instead of numbers, or you can, if you want to make sure that you are only specifically um, analyzing specific proposal IDs or specific observation IDs, you can basically play around with it and keep it repeating as for as long as you want. So this will, this will just be uh, a bash script that you can name something like this and you will run and it will be doing the same thing. If you don't want to do it in a scripting way, you can basically just either run the this one simple comment or you can create this one line comment uh, that will do exactly the same, but it will be just, you know, you don't have to do anything because you will be providing everything else uh already i i also want to again mention these quotation marks i will change them in here as well although from the beginning and the end it seems to be okay but i will make sure that they are all right uh once your pca prep ops id is done running it will take a couple of minutes depending on uh if you are able to actually connect to your caldb uh, because if you are connecting to uh, the calibration database using uh, their service, uh, FTP services, servers, not services, um, then you will need to rely on how fast your internet connection is, but it will not take any more than five minutes. Um, and if you are also want to, if you want to analyze like hundreds or thousands of observations at the same time, you can create uh, different uh, bash files and then you can run them separately on different uh, tabs. Although for that one, you might want to use a local calibration database that you will install on your own laptop because it will have some issues accessing it. But you will see when you actually have to deal with it by yourself. Then very similar to uh, the case that we had uh, in XMM Newton, you will need to again create a good time interval file. For these, you will have uh, a set of um, available expressions where you would need to include certain uh, things. Um, for these expressions, these screening criteria can I will I will send you a link of all of those things. Uh, but the basic one will need to include uh, when the target is actually going to be below the horizon of your observation, which is going to be this expression ELV cut. And then this will also include uh, not when it's not the when it's not actually pointed at the target. And uh, sometimes you can actually do this uh, screening criteria to be to make sure that you are working with the same PCU across uh, your entire outburst, so that you don't have to deal with uh, you know instrumental uncertainties that will come from uh, which detector was on and which one was off because the calibrations of all of these detectors or PCUs uh, are kind of different. 
for the most of the observation species, U2 uh, was almost always operating. So I, so far, I actually um, ended up uh, extracting spectra for more than 15,000 observations, and uh, I've only seen it being turned off only 10 times. So it's a good practice to use PCU2 when you want to deal with tons of observations. Otherwise, you can basically, if you want to just analyze one observation, you can use whichever PCU is available. It's also the most well calibrated one. Uh, so this is going to be what I will suggest. This this will apply all of this uh, screening criteria that I basically listed here, and you will replace this in this expression without the um, the dollar sign. So you will basically run this. Uh, one one important thing is that you need to change this name. Uh, so this actually corresponds to a filter file that you will find within your created uh, directory so that you, you will need to replace this name here, not just having a star here. So then, which is the easiest part, you will need to go and run only two more tasks and you don't really need to do anything about it in a similar sense that we had with XMM Newton, which sometimes complicate things. You can easily make errors as we have seen yesterday. So for Spectrum, you will run this specific one. And uh, as it was the case for preparing your observation, it will be having two options. Uh, you can run it and then do everything manually or you can create one line comment that will look more or less like this. So uh, I forgot to mention, but all of the PCUs actually are uh, made out of uh, a few layers. One of them, the first one is going to be your propane beta layer. And then you will have uh, three uh, xenon layers, which will also uh, be split into two other layers as well. So these layers uh, are going to be sometimes if you're depending on your intensity of the source that you might want to start excluding some of the layers. But for the big majority of the black hole X-ray binaries that you can basically start including all of the layers and uh, it's all right. This one means that we only need to be using PCU2. Uh, it's not a problem if you forget to use this expression here because we already created the GTI file that will only include uh, PCU2. And it, it also is still uh, okay if you don't want to create your GTI file only for PCU2 and you want to say, okay, I want to have the GTI for all of the PCUs and see how it goes. And you can basically start including this um, PCU list uh, in your source and um, spectrum and light curve extraction, which should be both file uh, fine. So you will have your GTI file over here and you will list your out file. Basically, they are pretty much the same. Uh, so you will need to be careful when you are running this task, you need to change this observation ID. Uh, I know the observation ID is kind of very long. So my uh, approach is to actually name these uh, observations by one, two, three, four chronologically, but you can do whatever you want. It doesn't really matter what observation, uh, what name you give them. Uh, you just need to be careful since these uh, source in files and background in files are actually lists you need to put an at sign in front of them. Uh, if you are not using a list as it was in the case uh, like this, then you are okay. But if you wanna, for example, if by some chance that you ended up with uh, multiple filter files for your observation, then you will also see a list that contains these uh, names for your filter. And then you will need to uh, have a similar approach as to this one. So every time you actually end up running your uh, task PCA prep observer ID, 
you will need to go and check within your uh, OBSID dash result directory and see what has been produced. But normally it will be just one filter file and you should be fine. As you've seen, there is no background or source selection. So you will just run these tasks by yourself. And all of these are actually fairly fast. So you will not need to wait uh, for anything else, especially after running the PCA OPS ID, you, you will be fine. Once you are done, uh, you will have your spectrum and your light curve. Uh, you can display your light curve depending on however you want to see. Uh, but one teeny tiny thing is that your bin size should be uh, either 16 or multiples of 16. Unfortunately, for this specific light curve creation, you cannot choose any other uh, available values. So just start with 16. And if you want to play around with the bin size, you can actually do so in the uh, the F tools called L curve. Um, now, uh, once you're done with your spectrum, you need to bin it. And also you need to account for instrumental uncertainties. Uh, before, uh, up until 2014, actually, the, the traditional way to account for instrumental uncertainties that cannot be, um, you know, done using the calibration database that we use for Hellsoft in general, would always be to apply 1% of additional uncertainty on your spectrum when you're actually grouping your uh, spectrum after you create it. Uh, so this is done by running this uh, tool within FTools. FTools is actually in, like, within uh, Hellsoft. So once you install it, it's completely fine. So it's like basically XPEC or if you've ever used uh, Ronos and um, some other tools, L-Curve, for example, those are actually within F-Tools. And then you will, uh, you can either just run this by yourself and go along with the um, prompt and give your uh, comment however you want, or you can specifically write this to your terminal and hit enter, and then you will have your out file that fits created for all of these uh, screening criteria that you enter here, which means group your spectrum with a minimum of 25 accounts per bin, apply systematics to channel numbers 0 to 128, which is uh, the channel numbers, uh, like the minimum, like the first channel and the last channel of PCA, uh, as an uncertainty of 1%. And once you're done, hit exit. If you don't put this, it will not exit the, the program and uh, you might enter a very crazy loop. I'm not really sure if they actually fix it in the, um, in the latest version, but I think a few years ago, I forgot to hit, like enter this one and uh, I ended up waiting for a very long time. So this was uh, the approach before. I will show you a quick, here. So this PCA core uh, is a very nice method to actually account for those uh, instrumental uh, uncertainties. What they ended up doing is uh, basically they analyzed a whole mission lifetime observations of the uh, crab uh, pulsar, and they ended up modeling it with, I believe, uh, with a, just a power law. And they created correction curves using these observations uh, for each one of the PCU files. You can uh, PCUs. Um, so I'm not really sure if they have the paper over here, but if you uh, uh, I cannot find it right now, but I will send you the paper and link it to the tutorial as well that explains everything that they have been doing if you are interested in it and they ended up correct uh, creating correction files that are basically these and also they ended up creating one python script that is fairly easy you can even change it to your own needs but unfortunately this was not updated uh, after 2014 and uh, when i basically 
downloaded it myself, I ran into a few errors and I have to uh, actually fix these errors by myself with uh, some one of the co-authors of this paper. Uh, so I sent you the updated version for both Python 3 and anything above. Uh, there are some syntax differences between Python 2 and Python 3, and uh, I corrected for all of those. There are a few ways that uh, you can actually run uh, these the script basically, uh, but what we will use most of the times is going to be this. So as, uh, did, did I mention it actually here? No. Uh, so for RxDE PCA, uh, they will, as I mentioned that it will, it has different layers for each PCU, which will have uh, different sensitivity throughout the observing time. So as you can imagine that when you are actually hit, when your detector is actually hit with high energy photons, these uh, layers will be affected by these high energy events throughout the observation and throughout the entire mission lifetime. So you will need to, you will see, um, what was it called? Degregations or um, some some sort of uh, problems arising from uh, having these uh, high energy events constantly being observed. So they have these uh, different time frames named as epoch, gain epochs. So they will have how many? Uh, five in total. Um, five being basically from 2000 to present, so 2000 to 2012, uh, and four being from April of 1999 to May of 2000. So most of the observations that you will see are going to be done in the latest part of the um, lifetime of RxDE. Uh, so this script actually assumes that you are working with uh, this epochs four and five. If you want to work with observations before 1999, then you will need to actually add this and then say epoch three or epoch four, uh, epoch two. Unfortunately, this script uh, does not include epoch one. Uh, so you, you cannot actually apply this to older uh, observations than 1996, I believe. So this is everything there is to know about PCA correction tool. And uh, it shouldn't be a huge file if you download it from uh, the the drive, the Google Drive link that I provided here. And once you are done with extracting your uh, spectrum over here, you will just simply run this or depending on which Python that you have on your computer, you will simply run this and you will obtain your corrected spectrum. Uh, then you will go back to your group tool and again, uh, apply your uh, binning and your systematic errors with only 0.1% and then hit exit and then you will have your spectrum. This is fairly easy and fairly fast. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise we can actually start doing it and uh, continue with the spectral analysis in the end. Maybe just a single question. Mm -hmm. uh, when you are when you were talking about the GRP PHA in the at the end of the mm -hmm. tutorial. Mm -hmm. uh, the in file, uh, the in file fits file is uh, what exactly? So this in file that fits is going to be what you obtain from running this. So it will be just whatever name you give. So, so it this will, will be so this it, one. Yeah, it will. Um, so, so what wait. you basically do is that you produce your spectrum from this line, and then you group that specific spectrum with a different name. It's better to name it uh, a different name. Like for example, you will have 
uh, let's say you you named your source spectrum one underscore source that fits it's better to have one underscore source underscore b for you know bin kind of way um okay. so you will you will have this your new name of your new spectrum and then this is going to be the expression that you will run do not forget to check for the quotation marks again uh, okay. they seem to be okay uh, right now yeah no i was just because i wasn't looking at this uh lines i was looking at the what was uh, up over it you know mm -hmm. on top and there is a source of paj so i was a little bit confused Okay. Yeah. Oh, also, I forgot to mention here. I will quickly actually open the uh, uh, the code for you to show you because there will be some uh, lines that you might want to change for yourself. All right. Okay. I will quickly find. So here is going to be, this is my naming uh, system. So it does what it does is basically takes the dot fits uh, part of your spectrum name and it changes into underscore p dot fits. So if you want to have a different uh, naming system, you can uh, yeah. change it. And if you end up naming your spectrum with a different uh, extension like the one that we had like sometimes they people use dot pha so be careful when you are using a pca correction tool and uh, so, so your yeah so i can use this pca correction tool if i you if i have a source dot pha but you, I need you to can rewrite. Use it. I need to need. I need to rewrite this uh, to the, to to recognize it, right? Exactly. Yes. Okay. I so need to rewrite this you line. yeah, yeah. You just need to search for the extension. So this is this is my creation for this specific one. Uh, yeah. I mean, it was already in the code. It's I just modified it for my own needs. Yes. And uh, you can just do whatever you want with it. It's a, I'm I'm not really sure about the level of Python that you you know have in your mind, but it's a fairly easy and at least like a lot of the parts are very well described and for a person who is seeing this for for the first time, it's a very well written. So you can actually play around with it as you wish, except for the part that you are actually applying the corrections. So if there is any others, uh, if there are no other questions, maybe we can stop the recording again and. Uh, okay, I have on another one. Extracting. Oh yeah, yeah. Can I? So at the begin beginning, right when you mm -hmm. specify which uh, OS IDs you are going to analyze, so these are just the ones without letters, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is going to be this should... one. Mm -hmm. Without so A this, and Z. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Good. So. A and Z are going to be like they are called the slew observations, which are basically the observations that are done before and after your specific observation. Um, it's mostly for calibration purposes. Uh, people still use them, but your main observation is going to be the one without A, Z, and there are also options for G and H. I believe I don't know exactly which ones stand for whatever. But you can check them uh, on, basically, there's one, oh, I, I didn't add it here, but I will add one link uh, that describes basically the everything that you need to know about PCA. But you will only use this one when you are using this okay. PCA observed, mm -hmm. prep OBS ID. Okay. Excellent. 